Oh, Sheeps asks, is there going to be a test? There could be. You should always be prepared for a pop quiz. Uh, but yeah, Zuller Pie, thank you for your concern and, and whatnot. I just, I laid out a little bit and I, I did, uh, I did that stretch where, you know, if you lay out and you, you keep your, your arms on the ground and your legs, but you take one leg and you, you cross it over. So it's kind of at a 90 degree angle and it, it gives your, it, it gives your back just kind of a nice, like, uh, just a good twist. And, you know, sometimes if you really need it, you know, again, it just sounds like a transformer. It just goes as you sort of decompress and everything goes back to where it's supposed to be. Well, yeah, it is. If I'm not the teacher here, who who's the teacher in the channel then? <laughs> Someone's got to step up and be. Now, you you have seen that I had a couple resources that were open towards the beginning of the last section. And that is... Aha. If you have your books open, class. A flump? Ah, but there are no flumps here. It is just me. Trust a flump is nowhere to be seen. You actually, you, you could have seen him in the D and D time segment that was before we went live. That's details, though. <laughs> now you may notice. Oh, what's this? A galley, a keelboat, a longship, a rowboat, a sailing ship, and a warship. Uh, and that's not just what you do in the south when on Sundays. That's not what a warship is. Um, this is on page one fifty seven of the player's handbook and you'll notice that there are some consistencies right so you're getting up some basic speed you know the, how much it costs it doesn't get into too much detail if you want to travel uh if you want to travel by ship um it uh it's getting what was it like two silver services uh coach ca uh, ship's passage one silver piece per mile right down here um, so it, it could be rather expensive and of course it'll only go up. This is presuming, I guess, average cabin or even steerage or something, you know, where you're lucky if you get a hammock. Uh, so the player's handbook makes some vague references to this stuff, brings it up. It's something to consider, maybe some price points in the grand economy of things. The dungeon master's guide does something similar. Um, you know, we're, we had ships. Now let's take a look at the sea, you know, navigation, uh, random encounters at sea. Uh, by the, this is on page 117, now we're on 118. Things that talk about shipwrecks and using them as a plot device. Um, uh, the weather at sea, and well, lo and behold, hold on a tick. Now this adds an, uh, this adds an airship. As an airship, uh, I, I don't, rec I don't think an airship was, uh, doop 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 Oh, I, I went too far, everyone. There we go. So airship's not here, but an airship is here. So again, there's a cost, and you'll notice that this was consistent. Boom. So here's the player's handbook chart. Here's the dungeon master's guide going over the, uh, the same stuff. But now you're getting some more stats, right? You're getting a crew. You're getting passengers. You're getting uh, how many tons of cargo it can haul. It's armor class hit points and damage threshold. And the Dungeon Master's Guide goes into what all of this means. So if you want to have some naval combat and the like, here it is. If we come over to the Unearthed Arcana, which is available for free, you, could, you should still be able to download this uh, and find it for free, you will see... that you're going to get you're going to get the same ships there's an airship a galley a keelboat a longship a rowboat a sailing ship and then a warship
And this is giving you even more... Uh, now, of course, the Unearthed Arcana are sample rules that are presented. But this is giving you even more insight into how the ships operate. Right? It's giving you scores for strength, dex, con. It's treating the ships like a character, which, in my opinion, you should. Uh, you know, your ship is a vital member of your crew. Here, you want to come up and see everyone? Come on. You could rub on a mini if you want. You gonna come up? Come on, bud. There he is. All right, everyone, break out your cat butts. Uh, stowing is always an option. That is correct. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, you know, we went over, uh, it went over the same ships, uh, the general classifications uh, for what uh, for what a ship could be. And it goes into, all right, so how, how is it controlled? Uh, how What's the movement? Uh, and, of course, the armor class and hit points and all that. Because in ship combat, that this isn't necessarily getting into. You know, what if you just want to disable the rudder? What if you want to, you know... What if you want to take out one of the masts so it can't get away? What if you just want to completely destroy the hull and sink everyone to the last man? Uh, and so we're getting a further refinement of these ideas. And I don't want to spend a lot of time in Unearth Arcana because some of this might have changed. But of course, I'll keep it open off to the side here. If we uh, go back now to Of Ships in the Sea, which is its own appendix in the back of this uh, this adventure uh, set of adventures. What do we have? So we don't have an airship. But there's the galley. There's the keel boat. Are you, are you noticing? You're noticing the pattern, right? So if you have the basic rules, this introduced you to it. And now we're getting some some refinements. And we're getting even more detail than what we were given in the Unearthed Arcana. Uh, so, for example, uh, let's say that we do uh, we do have a galley. So, creature capacity 80 crew, 40 passengers. Cargo capacity 150 tons. It can go 4 miles per hour, which is 96 miles per day. Now, th that's presuming favorable conditions and, you know, progress at all 24 of the hours. You're getting a stat block here like you'd see elsewhere um, with creatures. On its turn, the galley can take three actions, choosing from the options below. It can take only two actions if it has fewer than 40 crew, and only one action if it has fewer than 20. It can't take these actions if it has fewer than three. And so you're you're getting diminishing abilities based on the number of crewmen that are available, right? Now, you're going to have more crew than you need at any one time because the, the crew are going to take shifts. Um, but, you know, in an emergency, everyone's kind of pumped full of adrenaline. And, you know, so you can make do, which is why you can still do everything with half the crew. Because everyone should know what they're supposed to do otherwise. And and even not, not just their one job, but know about many other aspects of the ship. So you can fire your your ballistas, uh, your mangonels, uh, or you and or and or you can move. The galley can use its helm to move with its oars or sails. As part of this move, it can use its naval ram. Meh. Let's go to the galley here. So I mean. Pretty much the, the same stat block. Obviously, this is going to look better because it's it's printed material. Man, you are you're just offering you're offering the cat butt the entire time here, aren't you? Uh, what's nice uh, is they also give an example for a galley crew. Uh, so a captain, in this case the bandit captain, which you will find in the monster manual. And so if we want to go to the bandit captain, we would go to the back of the monster manual here. 
as they have humanoid NPCs. Let's see, these are creatures. You know, there's a killer whale. There we go. There's our bandit captain. By the way, uh, you can pop open these guys in Storm King's Thunder. If you sponsored a box of Storm King's Thunder, you might very well get a bandit captain. Uh, so a captain would be statted out as a bandit captain. Five other officers, first mate, bosun, quartermaster, surgeon, and cook, which would have the stats of scouts, also found in the back of the monster manual here. Uh, 42 sailors that are commoners, 12 siege engineers, which are guards, and then just 20 guards, as per guard. Um, now, this is something that's interesting, right? We're talking about a lot of the a lot of the, the common uh, a lot of the, the common ship workers. Oh, thank you very much for the host, Hypnotic. Yo, welcome, welcome. But this is something important to realize. If you're going to go on high seas adventures, the vast majority of your crew are going to be this. They have four hit points. They are challenge rating zero. Right? Average everything. They have tens across the board. Now, you could improve them if you, if you wanted to. But bear this in mind, if your ship is uh, being boarded, or if your ship is, you know, in some sort of combat, or... I don't know, uh, things are happening. These are your red shirts to use Star Trek uh, phraseology. Right? The bulk of your crew, 42 of your crew are sailors that are commoners. They just happen to know their way around a ship, but they're not necessarily extra sturdy. And so your character might be able to survive without days, without food or water. But your crew really can't. Your character might be, you know, willing to take on the pirates that are chasing you down because you're confident in, in your blade work and your in your ability to, you know, take a hit or two in combat if it comes to it. Your sailors, they're not. <laughs> and so, in this sort of environment, it it I want to bring this up because you are responsible for other people's lives. They're going to require water and food and shelter. And to also not be stabbed by pirates. Hey, Josh, welcome. Are we holding a raffle? Uh, no, Hypnotic. Uh, there is not a raffle going on uh, right now. The next miniature raffle will be Wednesday, June 19th, I believe. The third Wednesday in June will be our next miniature box raffle giveaway. It's uh, third Wednesday. Third Wednesday of every month, not fourth. I don't know if you're a fifth level character. You're a pretty big deterrent against pirate crew all by yourself. And Tesla, that, well, and that is something else to bring up. It, you know, if you and your other adventurers are level five or six officers, uh, that's true. There's not much that would keep you from just swinging over onto the other ship. If they are also full of commoners. Um, in this sense, we almost get the inverse proportion, uh, the inverse proportional strength of ninjas to pirates. And so how this works is uh, the more ninjas you have, the weaker they are. The more pirates you have, the stronger they are. And so if we apply this scale, one ninja should be able to take on 100 pirates and it 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 would be a toss up because they would be of equal strength however 100 ninjas versus 100 pirates the pirates are going to win one pirate versus one ninja the ninja is going to win <laughs> hey uh uh camo welcome back in my opinion, this is a perfect setting to implement renown or infamy like a bounty system. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad that you brought that up because there is there is an honor system in the Dungeon Master's Guide as a, a supplemental rule. And especially because we have a background, as we discovered before, that works off of honor, this could be a very good way to institute it. 
what is your honor? What is your rapport with other sailors, uh, with other pirates, uh, with different factions even? One Piece disagrees with that logic. What are we doing, Hypnotic Gamer? We are exploring the content in The Ghosts of Saltmarsh. The, the new set of adventures and also supplemental rules. Uh, Tesla says, yeah, don't go hunting them down, but make yourself known and they shouldn't want to mess with you. Fireball is the best way to sink Yar. Uh, yeah, you can. And and so fire can be your friend or worst enemy. And also at the same time, ships are very valuable. Again, let's let's go back. Look at the cost for uh, for some of these ships. If your life's in danger and you want to preserve your life, of course, uh, sink that galley that's chasing down after you. If your life is negotiable and you're confident that you won't lose it, maybe, just maybe, you don't want to nuke it with fireballs and instead cash in on that 30,000 gold piece value for the ship. Let alone anything you'll get for the, the contents uh, or the people that are aboard it. So violence can always be used, but violence may not always be the best answer. And uh, especially if you want to grow your own fleet. I mean, can you imagine running a, uh, a campaign or an adventure where, you know, your your crew starts out with a rowboat or or something small, like a, just a keel boat here. And over the course of the adventure, you know, you you continue like you, you capture uh, you capture a sailing ship. And so now you have a keel boat and a sailing ship. And you are doing all, all these other adventures and you keep growing and growing and you add on to the ship or you build a new one. And and suddenly, you know, you have the pride of the fleet, this huge galley, um, you know, towards the end of the adventure, you know, and, and people just absolutely fear it. And I, I think it would be an amazing thing to uh, to run. Yep, we're Eve online now. Exactly, Tesla. And this is why for the longest time now uh, I've been teasing the idea since that first Unearthed Arcana had come out, I would enjoy running something like this as an open game on the channel. You know, where we rotate people, like everyone can make a sailor character aboard a ship, and you all just go out on various adventures, you know, bring back wealth to the base and the ship and the fleet and all this. Um, I just need to get the logistics worked out and how to, how to run it and how to track it. And tracking is more of the holdup than running it. Uh, Black Wolf, I'm glad that you liked the events that happened, uh, yesterday in the role-playing game. A case incentive figure, Hypnotic Gamer, is something like the Niv-Mizzet that you have. Uh, so for example, I could, in, in many cases, I can only get a Niv-Mizzet in if I order a case of minis for my distributor. So I would need to order four bricks of Ravnica to get one Niv Mizzet. However, depending on the set or some different time frames, there may be a chance that I can order in a case incentive without having to get the case. It really depends. Uh Westmarch, yeah, it would be it would be uh it'd be similar to Westmarch style camo and what i do is i'd use one of our our workshop days you know we role play there's the tuesday game and that that's kind of its own sacrosanct thing but uh on another one of the days wednesday through saturday it would be our continual uh sailing campaign and and that would be a lot of fun and we could rotate people through adventures and and go along with that Well, Black Wolf, I'm, I hope it was inspirational to you. Uh, 
Uh, you'll notice here that uh, just like you find with... Uh, let's go. Where's our galley? Here's our galley. Just like with our Unearthed Arcana, you are finding that there are different aspects to the ship that have different armor classes and different amounts of hit points. Again, if you want to disable certain portions of a ship, then you know you can attack it in certain ways or cast certain spells to be able to do so. And all of this information, I'm not going to go through the minutia of every ship with you. That's that's absolutely boring. And you should be picking up a copy of this book itself because this book is amazing. Um, it's not, I will not call it Xanathar's Guide to Everything, which is, Xanathar's Guide might as well be, uh, uh, it's not a core rule book, but it's darn close to it. Um, so it's not like that necessarily, but there is solid, super solid content in here for you as a DM uh, and even as a player. And so I would really suggest that you pick this up. I have a biased opinion. Look, selling D&D stuff is what I do. I'm going to be upfront and honest with you about it. And if you didn't know that about me, well, now you do. Uh, even though, because look, you don't even have to buy from me. I'd certainly appreciate it, wink. <laughs> but even if you don't, I want you to play and be inspired and have an awesome time. A full point spell box you have available. All full pulls for, uh, for the boxes I have available. Um, so I have, uh, I have Mad Mage and Tomb of Annihilation, which are eight, they're 18 a piece for full pulls. And then I have some Storm King's Thunder, uh, which would be 22 for full pulls. So how do you want to break that up, um, Hypnotic? Black Wolf, I did not, I did not account for what happened in that session to happen. That was that was impromptu in making uh, the best use of the tools that I had available at the time. Oh, each one a full pull. Okay. Oh, uh, right. So it's uh, it would be uh, thirty six. Uh, so it'd be it'd be fifty eight, and that's. Uh, Sorry, that takes a second to go back to the history. In 58, gotcha. So I will do a full pull of one each of the ones across the top for you, Hypnotic. Yep, no problem. Yeah, when I when I swap screens on here, it takes a minute for the notification history to load. Yeah, no problem. No problem, Hypnotic. And thank you very much for your support. Uh, we'll, we'll crack open some cool minis for you. In fact, you know what? We are talking about... Uh, we're talking about uh, aspects of a ship... Um, this local store still has one in stock. You can order a, f uh, a ship called the Falling Star. And this is an enormous piece. This is about three feet long, I want to say, maybe a little bit longer. If we go to the, the tip, the, 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 you know, stem to stern. You can detach each of the masts. You see down here? These are magnetic, so it makes for easy storage. But let's say that you are conducting a naval battle on your map, on your table, and the pirates shoot out your, your front mast here, right? You can simply just take the mast and pull it off and pull it away. There is also... All right, so uh, you can see different components. Because uh, there is some sem uh, some assembly required here. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, yeah, here's the specs, by the way. <coughs> Pardon. It's in millimeters, <coughs> but it's about 841 millimeters long and uh, 437 millimeters high and 163 wide. Oh, uh, this isn't showing a very clear picture, but there is the, there's the steering wheel, there's the rudder, there's the masts. And here, uh, with each of these flaps, uh, you could always say that there are, um, uh, because these are detachable as well. You can always say that that's, if you want to have cannons or something, uh, however, more likely that is where the rowers sit. And so the flaps open for the rows, uh, for rowers. 
so that the boat can still make progress, even in doldrums. And you'll notice that on this ship, there are these different components that have different hit points or are different ways that you could uh, disable or go on to improve your ship. Also, you get several decks uh, that have a grid on them. And so you can set the decks side by side and you can have multi-level ship combat. Right? So you can have combat going on in the bilge. Uh, combat going on on, I don't know, okay, this would be like cargo deck. Then you can have the below deck area, and then you can have the fight on deck. And there's a grid on each of them so your minis can move around. And, and you can have all the swashbuckling adventures you want. Yeah, hypnotic, it really is. Um, I... Uh, I had two at the store, sold one to a very happy person, and I have one left. I mean, I can I can still order them in, but I do have one of them left. Uh, and if you want to order one in, then let me know, and I'll I can make an arrangement. Uh, they are kind of pricey though, so you, you'd want to set aside some um, you'd want to set aside some spare cash for it. Uh, Josh says so. With my sleep schedule flipped at the moment, last night I was super tired and thought of crazy things. One of the crazy things was I partially designed a setting. Where the difficulty or the DC and Marvel universes were one world and their histories affected each other. Kind of like the amalgam. Oh, I remember the amalgam universe. Uh, so, what did you have? Like the actions of Wolverine went on to reflect the actions of Batman or something? That was you on Tuesday, Hypnotic. Uh, so, really going through here, this is up to you. <coughs> Pardon me, my goodness. As a player or you as a DM, what kind of a ship would you give your players? As players, what kind of a ship can you afford? Or would you want to work up through the ranks and maybe eventually captain or capture or otherwise control yourself? I'm not going to go through the minutia. All the stuff that you need is right here. Everything is here for you. If you can read a basic goblin monster stat, you can read, uh, you could read the stats for a keel boat and uh, and things along those lines, right? If this is giving you uh, th aspects of what happens on the lower decks, you can rearrange it. You can have something not exist, or you could make it an extra big uh, keel boat. But this is giving you, pardon me, a great base of operations from which to work. Uh, keelboat, one of the smallest sailing vessels. Keelboats can be sailed or rowed by a single person. These ships of 10 transport small amounts of cargo or passengers. They're perfect for pleasure cruises as they're easier and less expensive to operate than larger vessels. A keelboat has the following features. Hanging lantern uh, or two cast bright light across the ship. Rigging on the ship can be climbed without an ability check. And the keelboat has one 10-foot tall mast with sails. Good. Basic layout. You're getting an ideal, uh, a written idea for the deck, but lo and behold, oh, whoa, what's this? In this supplement, they are giving you a grid-based blueprint for the ship. Will golly gee willikers, isn't that lovely? They're giving you the recommended crew. They're giving you just so much. By the way, that other one was the galley. Here's the keelboat. Here's the long ship. Right? Visualize it. You know, have fun with it. Rearrange this. And it's drawn in kind of a blueprint style so that it's easy to understand or modify. Or you want to make a catamaran? Uh, put two keelboats together and some planks between uh, betwixt them. Sorry, cat hair. Apparently he decided to leave a little bit of himself behind and not just his behind. Mm -hmm. 
the differences between a sailing ship and a warship. Here you go. Uh, by the way, if you want to, if you know anyone that's into history or, or the Navy or even naval history, uh, they are excellent sources to talk to about designing your own ship or about how ships outside of just the blueprints that are provided here could have operated or have been laid out. You can also learn some lingo, right? If you want to run a, a fun, convincing or convincing enough campaign... Uh, yes, this is the forecastle, but this is also abbreviated to the foxel. Because that's that's the abbreviation for forecastle, is the the foxel. You know, here's the quarter deck, and we hear of the infamous poop deck. Where's the poop deck? Why is the bathroom called the head? Ah. Uh? Do you know why the bathroom aboard a ship is called the head? Josh, you looked it up yesterday. And you learned that on a cruise ship. Oh, cool. Where did you end up going cruising, Hypnotic, if you're willing to share? You don't have to share personal details if you don't want to. Now I'm not gonna go through. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the officers and crew. That's gonna be something we're saving for tomorrow. But I do want to go over some things like the upgrades that are here. Actually, no. Wait, that's tomorrow. We're doing officers and crew and upgrades in combat and travel tomorrow. Um, so tonight, I'm sorry, we're just, we're talking about the ships and, um, and we're talking about, uh, and we're talking about, uh, the backgrounds. Really casual night tonight. Don't have to spend a, a ton of time here. And as you can see, you can get super detailed. I've had, I've had some amazing, I have had some amazing times, uh, doing sailing content, both in the sky and and on, on water in campaigns that I've run. And what you're getting here, you know, you can look at it and go, oh my gosh, there's so many different types of ships. I'm going to have to juggle so much stuff. It's, it's not that much because the methodology is applied uh, universally to all the ships. Some of the names might change the hit point values. But if you keep it there in front of you as a DM at least notes, you'll have an easy time of it. Especially if you come up with a set of rules or expectations and you empower your players with them, your players then will uh, do, have a studious time of memorizing, all right, this is how this works. This is my piece of the, the ship, right? I'm Jordy in engineering. I know how the warp core works. You know, I'm, I'm Dr. Beverly Crusher. I know how the med bay works, kind of a thing. And so it's not as much for you to have to manage because, you know, you are generally familiar with the things that you're going to be searching for, and you can simply empower each of your PCs aboard the ship to do that. Uh, hey, Tamrick. There's also a boat, a boat builder's forum somewhere online. They're pretty cool, but if you want to design a vessel properly, you either need some software or some naval architecture bur uh naval architecture books and um, you could find plans and such uh, schematics uh, in a lot of places uh, I went to Catalina Island and Ensenada Ensenada in December I I feel like I should know where those are hypnotic but unfortunately I do not can you enlighten me can you teach me some some geography because uh, it was right on the on the bow, right? Just before the front. Yes. And the reason for that, Josh, the reason why it was placed there. I mean, so it's called the head because it's, it's at the head of the ship. But think of this. If a sailor has a bit of an upset tum-tum and needs to use the facilities, do you want the bathroom and the, you know, the odors 
at the back of the ship or the front of the ship if the wind is continually pushing forward. Do you get what I'm saying? Tamrek says, I got rescued on my way to Catalina Island. There was too much drag on my boat from the skiff I was hauling. Oh my gosh. Well, that's so. There's an, there's a, a, na a naval adventure in itself, Tamrek. Uh, you, you could run out an adventure here. You lived, Tamrek. If you didn't, I'd be highly concerned because we've had conversations on this channel. And if that's the case and you didn't live, then who's been typing this whole time? I expect my druid players to know every spell by heart, says Rykon. <laughs> That's right. You have to have all your possible spells memorized, even if you don't ever use uh, most of them. Pretty smart. Hey, uh, and I wasn't the one who invented it, but yeah. If the wind is constantly at the back of your ship blowing forward, right? You want to fill your sails. You want to be pushed forward. You don't want... Uh, you don't want the evidence of people using the bathroom also blowing completely over the ship. And so if you put the bathroom, which honestly was just like a plank with a hole cut in it that you could put over the over the railing, maybe you had a privacy curtain, maybe. Um, then you put that at the head of the ship. The head, the bathroom, was at the bow of the ship because the wind blowing from behind would uh, carry your um, your refuse away. Well, that's because a cruise ship has modern plumbing. But if we're going back to get ye flask times and all you had to rely on uh, was the wind and and the wind you hoped was at your back. Uh, <laughs> now, that said, uh, yeah, with, with modern plumbing, you just have to worry about the bilge tank. The bilge tank is is then where the the business is stored. But if I want to put a boat in reverse, uh, which direction do I shift the wind? So you have to have a couple crew members uh, swing over to the clutch. And and then as a captain, you're going to have to tell them to push in the clutch. At the same time, uh, other crew members are going to have to go over to, over to the shifter and pull it into reverse. Uh, because, you know, ships back then, they were, they were manuals. You had to use the clutch. It, it wasn't an automatic. <laughs> uh, so showing a little bit of ankle for the, the next workshop here. I mean, so we have ships in combat. We have uh, crew in combat uh, crashing a ship. And you may have seen up above a couple of these ships have uh, charging uh, or they're called naval rams. Let me find one here. I think, ah, here we go. On the galley, a naval ram. That's also uh, if uh, uh, if someone, like, pokes your belly button too hard. That's a naval ram. Uh, the galley has advantage on all saving throws relating to crashing when it crashes into a creature or an object. Any damage it takes from the crash is applied to the naval ram rather than to the ship. These benefits don't apply if another vessel crashes into the galley. Uh, are there rules for how much damage is done if you fire on a vessel at its stern? Uh, yes and no. It Depending on the component of the ship that you hit, you might be able to disable it. And you can notice here that there are different armor classes, Tamric, for different parts of the ship as well as different hit point values. And how tough each part of the ship is. So, for example, if you wanted to target a, an enemy galley's oars, you would have to hit an AC of 12. And uh, there is... Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That's minus speed as you're destroying ores. Uh, look, I'm sorry, for the hull. If you look at the hull or the ram, 
you're seeing that something called a damage threshold. What this means is until you have dealt 20 points or more of damage on a singular attack, no damage is registered. So for example, you are at the helm of a galley and you're pulling away from, uh, from an island. I am an upset tribal chief uh, because uh, the captain of the ship has uh, apparently convinced my uh, my priestess daughter uh, to entertain foreign delights. And so I discover your plot and with my with my tribesmen, I, I try and run you off the aisle and of course you're running for your life with my daughter. And you board the ship, uh, and, you know, uh, anchors pulled up, and the the wind is filling, or you have your oars out uh, before the wind catches. And I order my archers to fire my, my short bows on your galley. I'm not really going to do a lot of damage to your galley with a short bow. Because even if I max out, that's what, a d6? Plus, let's say five, because I have the I have the natural limit to dexterity, so I can do eleven points of damage with a short bow. That is damage that will not register on your galley, because no damage is registered until you've hit the threshold. So now let's say that uh, I don't know I, I have um, I somehow can sneak attack. <laughs> I can somehow sneak attack your galley with a with a bow and arrow. Uh, and, uh, and I deal 50 damage. Well, we'll, actually, we'll just even say 20 damage. Your damage threshold is not damage reduction. So as long as I'm meeting the threshold on an attack, all of that damage goes through. And so if an arrow deals 20 points of damage, suddenly you have 480 hit points left to your hull. If I deal 25 damage, it's going to deal 25. Now, if I deal 19 damage, zero damage is dealt. So it's an all or nothing as long as you meet the threshold. And uh, there are some there are some things that don't have thresholds. Of course, you could always add them as a DM if you want to make things reinforced or whatever. Uh, but for example, if you're targeting my oars, uh, you can do so with my. I could do so with bows and arrows because there is not uh, there is not a damage threshold on the oars. And so as I am, you know, riddling them with arrows or I'm splintering the weaker wood for the oars, um, you're going to start losing speed because every 25 damage taken from the 100 is going to lower your speed. And if I'm killing off your crew, uh, you might, there's going to be a point where you can't even use the oars because you don't have enough people for it. So it may seem, again, I don't want people to look at this and go cross-eyed, go, I can't do this. This is, it's not that hard to read, and I want you to be encouraged by this supplement, not uh, not to fear it. Because this can make naval combat, um, it is still kind of abstract, gives you a lot of wiggle room, but it can make things a lot of fun. Uh, yes, Tamrick, I did say Wessel, or no, it was that you that asked me that. Um, I think I just lost my place in chat, hold on one second. Uh, Tamric asks, are there rules for how much damage is done if you fire on a vessel at its stern? Okay, so that was that's what we did. Oh, Josh asked, did I say Wessel? I did say Wessel. And yes, it is a Star Trek reference. Congrats. Zulerpai, I've sailed on some small sloops, and the head was in the stern. The bow is too narrow, I think. Well, did, did you have the benefit of modern plumbing, or did everyone just kind of... Say, well, it's natural, and <laughs> kind of went along with it. Or, or uh, if uh, if the head was uh, on the port, everyone kind of hung out on the starboard for a little bit. Uh, this might be a stupid question. I'm a bit new to D and D, but are we allowed to use different parts of Five E? For example, Ghost of Salt Marsh and something else, uh, or is it best to stick to one element? That is going to be totally up to the GM or to the DM who is running the game as to what supplements that he or she will allow. But yes, ultimately, it is all meant to interact with each uh, with each other, mingle and mix. Some are going to mix better with others. Some things are going to just feel way more powerful than another option. 
And so if you do that, realize that it's not always apples to oranges in terms of maybe power level is a good way of saying that. Um, Tamrick says, uh, as Captain Aubrey said, all ships are vulnerable at the stern because you can rip the length of their ship with a cannonball as opposed to only taking out part of its side. Oh, Rykon, yeah, you could have an explosive arrow. That that would probably do it. Uh, sneak attack from the fog. Mwahaha. And you know what? Um, creatures like earth elementals. Here, I'll, uh, I'll go back here. Uh, this, uh, so, oh, the Gale of Dur doesn't have it. Now, why was I looking at Gale of Durs? I, I don't know. I, I could not tell you. Ah, here we go. Uh, Siege Monster. The elemental deals double damage to objects and structures. There's a very good chance that an earth elemental will overcome the damage threshold of a ship very easily. And also something to consider is adamantine weapons. Um, in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, it clarifies that adamantine weapons automatically deal critical damage to objects. And so, if you if you're counting, uh, if you're counting the boat as an object, then you know if you are firing an adamantine uh, tipped ballista at it, then it will it will score as a critical hit. Now, that's not necessarily as guaranteed to overcome damage resistance, um, because you could min out your roll on a critical. Uh, whereas with siege monster, which earth elementals and there are some others. Um, there are some others that have uh, Siege Monster as an ability. Um, it uh, Just bear that in mind that these qualities exist on monsters or objects or things along those lines. Fireworks arrow like uh, the totally accurate battle simulator. Uh, what about the sails? What about the sails, Black Wolf? Zuller Pie, we fed the crabs directly, but didn't sail into any city marinas. But of course, we enjoyed the male prerogative and piddled over the side. Uh, <laughs> a traditional method. I, yeah, well, Zuller Pie, look, I mean, if, if you're with a small crew, uh, nature calls, everyone knows it, and, and in all honesty, in that kind of an intimate environment, uh, I, there's not exactly a reasonable expectation of privacy. Or someone calling you out because, haha, you had to piddle over the side. Like, meanwhile, what's everyone else doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, you're not? <laughs> All right, then. I You're actually the weird one. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, you, you get a cluster of friends like that and, you know, you, you see the bits. You, you get to know people a lot more, uh, a lot more intimately. Um, well, yeah, so adamantine, uh, in different lores, I'm sure it carries different properties. In 5th edition D&D, it is a critical hit against objet. Objet de art. What if the boat is considered an entity or an NPC? Um, is it still an object? An NPC can be an object. As the saying goes, what happens at sea? Yep. <laughs> well, Zuller Pie, sometimes you do something for the story and for the experience. Uh, yeah, hypnotic. I, I'm sorry. I I just I got on a 
I was, I was reading chat. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're done with our, our workshop session here. <laughs> so I'll, uh, <laughs> I can close this up and we'll, we'll pop your boxes. Sorry. It's, uh, it, it's, it's just been a fun and energetic chat. 